today, Father. As Bishop's wife and as the mother in this house, we honor her today, Lord. We thank you for the helpmate. We thank you for the woman of grace, the woman of integrity, the woman of honor that she is, Lord.
Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Come yeah. on. Let's worship his holy name. Yes, yes. Yes. Glory.
So Moses built a house, and then Jesus is building a house. And so the pattern, we have a pattern of how to build it uh, with Moses, uh, and then a more correct, uh, actually an excellent way, and a spirit of excellence with a, with a house that Jesus is building, which is the church. Man. People get confused in that because when, they, when, you, when, you, when you think and you have the mindset of church, and most do, I'm coming to Star Theater, I'm going to St. Mary's, I'm going to the Baptist Church, I'm going to uh, New Venture, I'm going to New Song, I'm going to, uh, but I'm going to the building. Right. I'm going to the building, that's church. And, and none of those churches or places that I mentioned is the church. Right. So that's the wrong mindset. Right. And so you have to change. That's, that's one thing about us. That's why I'm under I'm, I, everything I'm ministering on for the last, I don't know, three or four years, actually since I come back from the dead, yeah. is the renewing of the mind. Right. In uh, uh, Rome, uh, Romans 12. So with all, all those things in, uh, in, that's in, in mind, happening in your mind, then you have to, you, when you come to Genesis, which is Genesis Ministries International, because many don't know that they've been in for a long time. In other words, everything that we do comes under GMI because I started GMI first, which was not a church and is not a church. We, the, the, the GMI covers a church, actually many churches. We have um, 18 churches in, in West Africa, Ghana area, and then also in, in Nigeria, we have several churches. And then we're affiliated with Bensonita Hosu, who laid hands on me and ordained me a bishop, Archbishop Bensonita Hosu, who is now dead, but still alive in the ministry and very strong. So then we have uh, four churches in Pakistan that looked to GMI and they built a big building, so I think it's a five-story building, and then they, they have uh, the GMI uh, logo uh, stamped in that building and also registered with the government, which that's a lot, saying a lot. Because, you know, you know people, the common, which is us, that don't really know anything about Pakistan. You see or heard something on the TV or something, or you heard Ben Laden was killed in Pakistan. But you really don't know what's going on there. That's right. They're 90, almost 98% Muslim. Right. So if you're not Muslim, you, you, you could be killed. That's a whole other story. But anyway, we have four churches that cover us, that we cover there. And then we know the people, because all those are people. And then we, we have a, uh, five churches in uh, the Philippines, which Pastor Lee uh, Land, Pastor, Pastor Land, is the pastor that, that looks to us for, for oversight. And then I have uh, went to Nairobi, Kenya, where the president's from. Uh, I don't know, four or five times, and we have uh, David there, who's a businessman, a very uh, well-to-do businessman that came from the streets, came from nothing. And, and uh, with his help, my last time going there was to, to register GMI with the government. So we know we're registered here with the government. Matter of fact, every, everywhere we are, we, we're registered with the government. Because of my calling is to, to affect and, and change government. And, 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 and influence and bring the kingdom. And to work hand in hand. Uh, Anyway, that's a whole other story. I'm just saying all these things. So when you come to a place like this, which is, you know, I'm a prophet, uh, but, you know, under an apostle, 
which, but I grew up like Paul did with the different um, ministries uh, that he that he flowed in until he came into his apostolic ministry, and I was the same way. Uh, uh, you know, first flaming evangelist, and I'm still I still have the sting of the evangelist, and I say everything in this ministry. If you want to do, and if you don't want to do evangelism, you can't do it here. Because we, we're not that kind of ministry. We, we're uh, boots on the ground uh, and, and knees on the ground. We, I, I want to honor uh, the women, Mother's Day. All the mothers. We honor you today. You know, I, I, I don't feel like I need to say a whole lot because Dan already covered it. Now, if you wasn't here to hear that, then you, you know, you got to, I'm, I'm not going to recover. I cannot do a better job than what she did. But I do honor uh, Cookie as the mother of my children. Now, I will see my mother today, who lives in Las Vegas, who's 70, 79? Oh, so she's going to be 80 this year. So I'll see her today. Because we have important business to take care of tomorrow. Which we're going to the Supreme Court. Uh, which we've been, this is the second time that we've been, that we've gone for the same case. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of money has been uh, expended. Uh, which all, you know, the 14 years of this battle. Wow. Wrongfully, uh, you know, without getting a whole lot of deal in detail, one's wrong, <laughs> one's right. And that's what we're looking for, for to be vindicated. Wow. And we got a half vindication because that's, that's, that's the way uh, the carnal uh, mindset is for judges or whoever it is. We didn't want to compromise and all that, but we're not looking for compromise. Right. Right. We're not looking for who got the most money. Right. We're looking for justice. Yes. Yes. So we're we're looking above the, the, the court system. Right. We're looking to for Almighty God yeah. Yeah. for justice. Hallelujah. Anyway, that's your free part. Hallelujah. So the reason why I'm saying all this, not that, that's your free part. This is what I'm doing about it for my mother. Because she asked me was I going to be at the, at the hearing, I told her, I always have told her, you know, if I'm not there, that's because they already buried me. Amen. That's the only way I'm not going to be there. Amen. I'm going to be there. Yes, sir. Amen. And bring the kingdom. Amen. Did last time. Amen. And we'll do it again. Yes. And we will be vindicated. And be done with that. But anyway, you know, this I guess it's the persistence that you have to have. And, and, and I, I, you know, today when the spirit began after Diana uh, prayed, which was already was moving, it began to flow. Then the team with their songs. And, in the midst of their songs that they pick, because I've taught them to be a prophetic praise and worship team, which means to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to do and say what He wants. But that puts a lot of pressure on your carnal head. My 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 little cream in the coffee over here. What's her name, Rabbit? Reagan. I I name what what is it? Riley. Riley. It's Riley. Riley. I named her the White Rabbit. <laughs> and she came over, she always comes and gives me a hug, and she gives Cookie a hug. And so I said to her, why don't you go up there and sing? She goes, up there? I said, yeah, up there with your friends. She said, well, I, I haven't gone to practice. Listen, listen, I haven't gone to practice. She knows she knows the rules, guys. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm going to practice. Right. But you see, I overrule I overrule the rules, but I made the rules. So I felt like get on up there. And I, I told her, I said, fake it. I 
said lip sync, she didn't know what I said, fake it. Then I noticed when she was up there, she was singing the, the words, and she was moving, and she was clapping, and she had some better than her, some already up there. And I said, she did a good job. She did a good job. Okay, he said, why is Bishop talking about that? He said, he missed it. I'm talking to you about what the Spirit has said today. And one of the things he said, he says, get up. Right. Some of you sitting nice and comfortable in these seats and ain't did nothing. But you want God to move real, real, real bad. You ain't did nothing. Well, he's waiting for you. Yeah, that's the way it goes. And so, uh, to show you how the children are, I tell her go. She's she goes this way, and then she realizes, well, man, I can't get through there. So then she goes, shoo, 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 and she's right there. I said she got more sense than the adults. The adults they walk up right in the middle, the midst of the whole thing, and, and, and Make, make a big showing that they late. She eased in there. And my point is so that's the childlike heart you have to have. Doesn't matter your age. And then see that that's another mindset. It's another mindset that you have to overcome. The, the, what, you know, what is your mindset that's keeping you from, from going forward and receiving what God has for you. Good. What is your mindset? Say some of you tell me if, they, if I if I say you to do something, Why? the first thing you're gonna say to me is I can't. Why? And then you're gonna tell me why you can't. Why? What are you gonna do? Why? You ain't gonna do nothing. Why? Because we told to do something, you don't do it. Why? And then you say why you can't, and then Why? look. And then when you give your excuse, Why? you're happy with your excuse. Why? Why? Like, yeah. Why? This, I, and, yeah. Why? And you feel better and better Why? about the excuse you made, Why? and you're still on your butt, Why? and you ain't did nothing. Why? Ain't nothing going to happen for you. I'm telling you, with God, you got to move. And I see if you, if you can sense the Spirit, when he was saying push, no, first get up. Yeah. That was the first thing. When he said, I, I said all that. Right. Just so you know. <laughs> because I could hear the spirit saying, but anyway, just get up came from the team. Whoever it was, don't make no difference. I think it was Gladney. Yeah. Yeah, Bird? Bird? No. Bird first? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, what do we know, Holy Spirit? Great. That's the Bible. Oh. <laughs> That's my daughter. Yeah. My flesh and blood. Yes. And cookies, flesh and blood. Yes. But anyway, so it's get up. Right. Right. Then move. Right. Then if you can't move, do something. Right. Yeah. It's, it's very simple. Yeah. That's how you're going to get out of your situation. Whatever yeah. your situation is. Yeah. Okay, most of you have lack. Uh, right. In other words, see, right. somebody came right. come, Somebody right. came clean. You heard that? Right. It was a woman. Right. But and that's good because that you got to recognize where you're. But let me tell you what I mean by that. So when I say lack, you can't. You think in your mind you can't do what you need to do because you don't have money. Right. And I've been preaching for over 30 years that it's not about the money. It's about the faith of what God has given you each a measure of faith to operate in faith. Faith says, I don't need the money. I told you I just shook hands with a man and bought a, over a million dollar house. My credit I can't get, I can't get, make it. Right. Did you what I just told you? Yes. Yes. My credit, if I'm going with that system, right. I'm out. Right. Right. I'm, I'm, I went to a credit man with, with, uh, what, what was the 15 points from, from being, getting, getting, getting my VA loan, which was, uh, I got 600 and, 
and 19. 619 was one of my scores. And so I could get a VA loan with 619. So I go to a credit man to get the rest of the stuff, of the stuff, uh, uh, debt, collections and all that stuff uh, deleted, which I'm paying him. So I've had him six months or whatever. I'm just telling you guys, I can go into all the natural stuff. You got to do something. What well, since I've been with him and over a thousand dollars out of my pocket, my credit score now is five eighty seven. Wow! 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 And he's trying to let me know how good I'm doing. So we've been riding him like 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 a cowboy rides him to break a horse. I told Bell call him every day, many times a day. Some some people I told us on just other occasions. I mean, same conversation. I tell her, you ride this lawyer every hour right. until you get him. Right. Not secretary, not message. Right. Him. And so those are the kind of orders I get. But anyway, so we ride uh, Jay, who's a good man. Yes. And so when I look at my credit, 587. So what, 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 what am I going to get with that? Right. I can't get nothing. Right. But as far as they're concerned. Right. Now in the meantime, I'm moving every day. Right. Right. I'm out there every day. I'm talking about looking for a house. You know what I'm talking about? I'm looking for a house. Every day. If I'm not physically in my car, driving the whole area where I want to live, then I have agents. Five or six of them. Making telephone calls. Looking at the internet. Going on the MLS. Getting, shooting me pictures. Because I put in them what I want. In other words, I did this and I just looking for any old thing. No. I tell them what I want. You, they, you gotta say what you want. You gotta, you gotta do something. You gotta get up, you gotta do something. Uh, Big Anthony had a great testimony yesterday. When I opened it up, we had a great men's meeting yesterday. And the women had a wonderful love for you. If we have time, we're going to have a few people from both sides. I know there's women to get up a few. We have a few names that we want to call. Yeah. And then we have a few names of men. Actually, I haven't even asked. But that's just the way it goes. If you, if you, right. You're supposed to be ready. Right. But Big Anthony said that he had, he had, had not been working for what, however, however long, a week, a few days a week. And he said, and then look what he said. He said, but I wasn't really worried. Right. Right. And I was looking at Anthony because Anthony has changed since he's been with me. Yeah. Now he's still tatted because he can't do nothing about that. Right. And I don't care. Right. Well, I'm, I, you know, I, when, I, when I'm on stuff, I'm just saying those things are negatives in the world right. where, where you have to function. Right. Not not trying to look cool. You in there with the, trying to look cool. Right. Trying to keep up with the with the fad. Right. And you got butt out, breasts out, whatever it is, everything right. out. Right. You in there as far as that, but right. you ain't in there unless if you're a woman you're doing that, then you have to go and be in in a uh, uh, what they call that strip joint. <laughs> and you gotta learn how to ride on the pole. I'm talking about if you want to dress like that, that's what kind of job you're going to have to go get. Because if you go, if you go into an office like that and they, they, they're looking for a secretary, whatever it is, a nurse, whatever it is, you can't be like that. Now they're going to be nice and thank you, thank you for your application, and they're not even going to look at it. Because they see you. So the only thing that I'm trying to do is try, I'm, I'm combating the systems of the world that tell you 
to do all this foolishness and tell you, no, no, that's you are not going to make it like that. I'm trying to show you how to make it in the world today. Not, not, not 40 years ago, today. That's all I'm trying to do. From, from the, from the, the cradle to the grave. That's what we deal with. But anyway, so the Spirit was saying these things. Go to Philippians. Let him tell you where to go. Philippians uh, chapter 3. So what I want to talk about, you know, first of all, I have to fight Mother's Day. In other words, let me tell you what I mean by it. So since it's Mother's Day, then I have to give a Mother's Day message. But that, that's tradition. The Spirit is not telling me to give a Mother's Day message. Diana already did. I, listen, Diana batted cleanup. I put her. I put her up just to get on first base. If you understand baseball, that's all I needed. A bunt, you know, base hit, a double. If she hit it deep, then you know, even take third base. But she took it out the park. So, and I recognize that by the Spirit that she cleaned that whole, everything up about Mother's Day. She covered it. And so I said, oh, well, that's wonderful. Now, I can go and do my message. See, so I'm, I'm going to do my tradition. My own world, I'm following what I've been preaching. But then when the spirit is moving, and I had my, my grandson, Samson, and he'd been, he been, you know, he'd been controlling his world. As soon as he can start figuring out what's going on. So in other words, if you don't understand that language, so what he does is that when he gets with, with men, and with that have authority, he re he realizes that his authority is not the same, and that he's not the boss. He knows that just by sitting on you, and he looks and he's looking at you. So then he starts his acting up. He starts to eat, grunt, eat, ah, ah, eat, you know, and then he'll go into a full uh, uh, manifestation. <laughs> Was yelling and screaming, and, 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 and you know, I when he's up, he knows. So when he starts that, then he has to immediately go for me, because I can't handle that. I, I never had that, Marcia. I don't know what that is. Now you had in your life. You think it's normal. That's fine. You keep it. But if I know that they can be controlled from the cradle because I did it with Clifton who's oh, he gonna be 40 this year? Yeah. Right. Okay, so I, I did it with Clifton from the from when he first came out and came home after I last sued his mother. Then then I, I had to I trained her and I because she's she's out of control. Because she believes that babies, you know, it's just normal. So I told her, no, it's not normal. We're not having that crying. And then the baby wake up in the middle of the night and crying and screaming and got. And I said, no. Right. She's like, what? Yeah, what? <laughs> I said, no. He, and I told Clifton, he's just born now. It's just a few months. I told him, we we don't do that in the Baptist family. I said, you you. You created to sleep at night. <laughs> See now you gotta understand. You, you you didn't hear what I just told you. You don't know you don't know Genesis. You don't know creation order. It, it tells you what you're supposed to be doing. So those that are working at night, and you got all kind of you know crazy stuff going on. You gotta take some. You take the sleeping pills and, and taking some drugs. And if you don't do the, get smack hauled in you, right. and all that to try to sleep. No, right. that's all natural, and that, that that's causes other problems. Right. What you have to do is take some Holy Ghost. Right. Now what I mean by that, let me even break that down. Right. Some of you don't understand what that means. That means you, 
instead of filling yourself up with the TV right. and, and all the mess that's coming through that TV, right. you shut that off, put some praise and worship on. Right. When we when we go to bed at night, I have the the, 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 the little small little stereo right by my my nightstand. You gotta realize I've been on the move for almost a year. So I never know where I'm going to be the next week. I can't live like that, but that's how I've been living. Because that's what I've been doing. Moving, pushing, believing. Talking to myself. Selling myself in my mind. God said, I'm going 30 years, so I'm taking 10 more. He said, that told me that was fine. So I said, I'm taking 40. So I got to realize, how was it 40 years ago? So if I could, I could have dealt with that 40 years ago, so why can't I deal with it now? Right. So Cookie says something to me because that's great help me. Because she knows I, I, I can't stand the way things are. Right. Even though we one block off the beach of this one spot. Right. Which is the one gave us the bed bugs. Right. And she said to me, you need to look at this as a, a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we went to Hawaii, we would be like this one block from the beach yes. right. and we'd be happy yeah. and we could see the ocean yeah. and so we would be happy. So then in my mind I went, Carlton, hey, it helped me. Unbelievably, it changed my whole life. I'm just, I'm just saying about myself. And so. You have to be doing something. What's, right. what's the plan? Right. Yeah. Right. First thing, the first plan is get off your butt. Right. Right. Get up. That's right. the first plan. Yeah. And then, what are you going to do? Right. Well, do something. Right. Listen, even if it's the wrong thing, right. at least you did something, you found out, well, this is not it. Right? right? And so then you get a little energy because you, you went out there, and so you go some more. Right. Okay, now, listen, let, let me change it, because that's one thing. What about, what about if you go to the hospital? Right. What if you got health challenges? Right. What if you got a disease or diseases that, are, that, are, that you fight? Right. That have attacked you in your body? Right. Right. What do you do with that? Right. How do you handle that? Right. Well, what I do, is when I get out of the hospital, I, I don't remember it. Right. I do it in my head. Right. Let me give you the scripture. I, I do it in my head. I said, and, and, and I have people around me and tell me, don't, 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 don't go fishing. You know you just had a double moment. You just got out of the hospital. Gabriel's texting me. And they, and they love me. He said, Dad, this is not good. You know what they we know what they said. Right. You know what the what the prayer was. You know what the prophecy is. You know what they said. They said, "Don't be stubborn. <laughs> you, you don't be stubborn now. You Man. need to listen." So that's what my son tells me. I hear all that, and I still do what I want. <laughs> I do what I want, and I and I put it in my head. And if Gabriel tell me something, I, I adjust more to it. Right. But he don't know that. Right. But I'm saying it now. And he still don't believe it. But I, I, I think about it and I go, yeah, that makes sense. Same thing with Cookie. Uh -huh. Cookie will say something to me. This is how I am. Cookie will say something to me. And the first thing I do is shoot it down. But I'm the, I'm the, 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 the disciple. Jesus said it was two disciples. He said, one, I said to go and do this. And they said, we'll go do it right away, Lord. And when did nothing? Right. That's a lot of you. Right. Then another one, he said, I told this one to go do it, and this one said, no. Right, right away. Right. He said, but then he went and did it. Right. And the Lord said, which one did the will of God? Right. And he said, the one that said he's not going to do it, or right. she's not going to do it. Right. He said, that is the one that did the will of God. Right. So what happens, my wife tells me something, because it, it, she, she, she's from the other side of the brain. Right. That I don't use. That's right. See, my brain is different than yours because I'm left-handed. So that puts me in a, a minority. 
than the majority. So I and I'm so I'm already weird. Because you see, the reason why is because I'm a pioneer. So I'm a pace setter. So I'm not I, I, I'm not foul, I'm not a cow with a stamped number on my butt going down thinking every day everything is fine and we get down to the end there. Your life is done. I'm not that person. I don't follow the crowd. I don't care what the crowd is doing. I don't care what the crowd is saying. Everybody, everybody over here. Oh, everybody over here. I'm like, why? What's over there? My first thing is I'm not going over there. Because a big old crowd, is, a, as far as I'm concerned, is a mess. Too much noise. And people, anyway, don't get me started. Yeah. So, with my wife, let me finish that train of thought, then I'm going to give you the scriptures. And I'm giving you the scripture the whole time. Right. In other words, the principle of the scriptures, I'm giving it to you practically. practically. Right. So, when I, Cookie says something to me, I immediately, no. Or I may think about it for two seconds and then no. <laughs> but then I go away. And I may not go out of the house, but I just go away a little bit, and then it, I start thinking on it. What was said? Even if you say something to me, right? I can hear God, right. and it don't matter whose mouth it come out of. Right. Anyway, so you got to learn how to do that. Yes. Amen. But I'm just saying the kind of disciple that I am. What kind of you? Are you the one that says, right away, Lord? Right. <laughs> or are you the other one that says, I want to, Lord, but I have to bury my father. Right. Oh, come on. I have, I have other uh, engagements. Right. And, uh, you know, what do you think you will get from God with, those, with that attitude? Right. Nothing. Because you don't believe you're going to get nothing anyway. Right. I believe I'm going to get something. Amen. And every day, yeah. every day, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't wonder why Nolan ain't, ain't called a miracle man. Because every day, when you see me, miracles are dropping. Yes. Because Amen. I'm one every Amen. day. Amen. Amen. That's why I know I said about my grandson because I never finished that train of thought. But I, I, I when they kept on saying get up, yeah. and they were saying he's mighty, and, I, and, and, and all those things was just jokes to me, like get up. Yeah. But I said I, I got this weight <laughs> on me, Samson, and I'm happy because this is the first time in months that he has allowed me to hold him without acting a fool. <laughs> He, and he tried it, but I, I was able to push through it. Uh, and that's only what I can tell you. So I was enjoying holding him because, you know, he's my flesh and blood. And I, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed that. that. As a matter of fact, I enjoy that more than any. With family and friends. And uh, and I, I I do count uh, some of you friends. Right. Some of you I'm not sure yet. Right. You know they, they got this they got this thing in the in the underworld when you go and you shake somebody's hand and you and you don't know them you're not sure you run up to the side. That's the only way I can say it to you. And see if there's a knife. Or some other kind of situation right. that's not shouldn't be there. Right. So that's how I am with some of you because I don't know you because I already I can pull my shirt up and I right. uh, don't right. want to do that. But right. I can pull my shirt up and show you all the stab wounds right. and the holes right. that I that I've endured, yeah. a front and back. Right. Wow. So I'm not trying to to uh, right. get some more. Even though they will come and they've already come, they always come. But it don't matter. See, you heard me. You understand my thinking? Because that's how I think. It don't matter. 
I tell myself, I was telling the man yesterday that my that my my philosophy is is grounded in the word. Yes. But my my push and my zeal is from the athlete. Right, right, right. right. Wanting to win. Right. Yes. Amen. And I have a desire to, to, to finish the course right. and to obey God and do what he wants me to do. Yeah. And, I, and I won't allow anything to come. That's one thing that Gabriel said. You know, let me say this about meetings. In meetings, even this meeting, there's, there's someone, and it could be me, and it may not be me, that says something in the meeting that has the most weight. Right. Now, everybody that says something, if they're in the flow and in submission, yes. then they'll mean something that can affect someone right. in the meeting. Yes. But then, in the midst of all that, what I just said, the Spirit will speak through someone. Right. Now, tradition and religion has the word, I'm the apostle, I'm the bishop, it's got to come to that. No. Right. That's wrong. He'll speak to whoever he wants. Right. Right. The deal is, is can can you do you have ears right. to hear? Right. Because most of you, when you hear somebody that you have not heard, you immediately right. are, are negative right. and you shoot them down right. because you don't know them right. and you don't trust them, right. and then they can't do it, whatever. You right. give them all that stuff, not realizing that that could be right. God right. speaking. Right. Like I said, I got to stop Marcia from speaking in the prayer because she's lazy too, black and white. She's got to hide it more because when she says it like that, it, the people that are, that, are, that are zombies in here, which are flesh eaters, because they don't know no other way. That's a, that's the way that he's always been. She's been flesh. So then, he, then somebody drops the spirit, a word. Sound and it's you know it's it's just it's just too much because the the person that she's talking about whoever it is me or whoever it is is going to take a serious beating. Matter of fact, she's going to take a beating too for saying it. So I said I, I said I, I have to suppress her even though I'm just talking. I'm not. I would never stop her even though it, it's it's I, I'm I'm nervous. <laughs> because she's seen too clearly right. and there's others here like that but I'm, I'm saying everything I'm saying now because you have to be able to recognize there could be anybody up here Nolan, Nolan drops the word many many times it could be in his trumpet too it don't even have to be word so some of you get mad with the, with the, with the trumpet which is the, his, his James Brown yell that's the trumpet and I realize that it's so much power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When he when he hits that, it's so much power. So that's one way. There's other Christine, there's so many different yeah. people yeah. that are saying and giving words. I'm giving words down here to them, and you don't even know it. Because the spirit is saying to me, and I'm saying to add this, and it, and it just it keeps lifting. Yeah. They're doing it, I'm doing it, Gabriel's doing it, Cookie yeah. does it, yeah. and it tries. <laughs> but anyway, I want to say about Carlton. So in the, in the, in the, because of our men's meeting. Yeah. So we all had, not all of us, but most of us had something to say. Right. And had weight to right. it. Amen. It was, it was, it, it needed to be in the meeting. Right. It needed to be said, someone was ministered to yeah. by it. Yeah. Yes. And the, actually, the meeting I think Clifton had prayed. Did you, Carlton? Did you speak after Clifton had prayed? Right, right, Cliff. Right. Well, you, you had prayed. Yeah, the meeting was, was the meeting was, was over, right. wasn't it? it was yeah, that's what I thought. So the meeting is over, right. but is, that don't mean it's over with the Holy Spirit. Right. That's right. So that's why when you run out early. Yep. And, and, and think I didn't get nothing. Well, it could have been it, it could have been you already left, and then God spoke. But you left because you had whatever. Right. Yep. More important. 
Carlton said when the meeting was over, he said something to say. I, rec I recognized, and I felt in my heart because I called on him. I, I felt in my heart Carlton had something. So Carlton said, he said, I want to say something. And of course, the men are all talking. We get, they get up, we're going to really go to order their food and all that. If something want to leave, because the meeting's over. I said, wait, wait, wait. Let's hear, let's hear what, 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 what the Spirit actually has to say through Carlton is what I'm saying. And he said, I, I want to say something to Gabriel. Oh, yeah. And he said, um, yeah. how, first of all, he needs to say what he says, even though they say he's hard and he's got a hammer and all that, um, which he does. That's, that's the sting of the prophet. Whether he like it or not, don't make a difference. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And then um, he said, in the way that you help your dad, so you think without well, anybody can say that and you know there's no big deal. No. Nope. That and also Clifford had said something too, but but in my estimation of discerning, which is one of the gifts right. in First Corinthians twelve, discerning the spirits, right. which many Christians don't don't recognize that or know what that is. Right. But right. the Holy Spirit does give you uh, discernment if you if you if you're sensitive to him, but he, when Carlton said that, first of all, my heart he pierced my heart because of how um, over 30 years I've been looking for men, and and uh, because I I know that the, the government and authority rests on their shoulders, and. When he said about Gabriel and how he helps his dad, what what else you say, Theo? I said that. Uh, you said it was more coming to see to see how Gabriel. You guys stand here? Stand up. Yeah. Yeah. The one who's in the back can't hear them. Here, take this, Theo. Morning, saints. Good morning. I'm not up there when I'm down here. I thank you can God. Come up here if you want. <laughs> it's short. Okay. I thank God for this opportunity. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a blessing and an honor to, to stand in front of y'all and express my my feelings. As I express my feelings towards Gero. You know, I, I, I said yesterday, I, I said, you know what? This young man, I seen this boy when I came, he was like, the kids him. You know? And I look at Gabriel to, 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 to date. And I say, you know, you know, people may not receive what Gabriel say for who he is. But Gabriel, Gabriel stand up and be the man for his father. The, 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 the father and the son is like the Holy Spirit. It's the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. That's the man over there to his father. That's why his father is here today. Because of what Gabriel has done. Good for his father. You know, and, and that, that touched me. I stand up here, and every time that man, he, he, he preach, I go up there, and I say, well done, son. I'm proud of you. Every, every time Gabriel stand up here, I go and I, I, I tell him what he's doing. I say, keep, keep doing that, Gabriel. Amen. It's good. Yeah. You know, and he says to me, Tio, I thank you. And I always look at you to pull strength off of you. Yeah, that's right. Every time. Yeah. And I said, I I'm here. I'm here, Gabe. Bishop, I'm here. Yeah. I'm always standing here with my wife. Yeah. 
I say much, I don't say much. I'm always sitting there. But you know, there's a time. You know, if it's time for me to say anything, I will. Because we always ready. Just like my wife. You know, we are together. You know, I don't I don't apart, she don't apart. You know, we stand up. That's right. And that's all all, all of you have to do. Yeah. Every one of you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, since the Holy Spirit is doing it, I'm going to recognize it. And we'll do, we'll say about the men's meeting, then we'll bring two, two or three women and let them say what they want to say in their heart. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. First, I want to give honor to God and to my bishop, prophetess, Genesis, my extended family. Yesterday at the men's meeting, it was always, it's always good, but I always try to be very observant and see what can I get from the meeting. First thing I got is when I got to the meeting, I repent, I'm sorry, I was a little late. But when I walked in, Bishop was there which two weeks ago he wasn't. He usually come in, uh, sweat, see he wind down for the men's meeting. But yesterday he was very sharp. He had a glow about himself, I didn't even tell him. I just thought back to the two weeks ago he was in the hospital, they telling him, uh, you know, of course they always give him that match, he ain't gonna make it. But then I got him some strength from that because I'm like, wow, he is such a warrior. He fights and, and yeah. nothing holds him back, so I gain strength from that. Right. So that was the first thing that I observed. Right. Then, as the meeting went on, Gabe spoke about submission. Right. Then I noticed that it's starting to happen. The men starting to get it. Right. And what I got that was very touching is that some of the men few months ago was sitting in the bag, wouldn't say anything, but they starting to get it. They starting to feel what we trying to bring to them. They starting to see that it's real. Amen. Yeah. Big yeah. Anthony's testimony, he wouldn't yeah. say nothing two months ago. You couldn't get nothing out of him. But you can see the spirit and how it works. He got up and he gave his testimony. And like I said, he said he wasn't worried about it. And it wasn't just a figure of speech. He meant that. And God blessed him right away with work. So we appreciate that. And then Ernest gave a testimony of how God is working. So when you got these young men that don't know nothing about this walk, but they developing and they learning, this touches me. And it lets you see that the leadership we under is very powerful and it's going somewhere. Then, then the last thing is when Gabe, you know, it's like how strong Gabe is and how he puts the hammer down and how he does this. Well, like Carlton said, Gabe didn't have this all his life. So what I broke down to the men is that everybody is at different levels. And you got to get to that level. And so it's like I try to explain to them if Gabe is coming to you like this, don't take it personal. Like Bishop said, don't be a wimp. Don't be scared. Just take it. Take it like a man. Right. Right. Gabe is doing it because he loved you. Right. And we didn't see so many. We didn't lost people that Thank came that God. didn't listen. Right. We got some that's in jail. Right. We got right. some that left wrong. Right. So that's what I tried to express to him. Don't, don't give up. Just stay here with, and keep your course. Right. Right. Thank you. We also have some that's dead. It's not with us. Rest in peace. Good morning, church. First, um, I want to give honor to my mother. My mom, 
mom would uh, pound in me every single day about reading my Proverbs and uh, reading my Psalms. Before I did anything, I had to do that, even before my homework, um, before chores, everything. It's, you read your Proverbs first. And um, she actually, my both of my parents, but they actually instilled the um, scripture that you train up a child in the ways of the Lord. Amen. And they will, not, they will not turn away. Amen. They will come back. And um, yesterday, um, when my father, when my father was uh, ministering and telling us about his life and all the the um, all the different things that he had to overcome, and he was actually doing it by faith when he before he even knew what faith was, and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you understand what that means. It means that it was put in him. God told him at seven years old that he had work for him to do. So from that point of him being seven years old forward in the rest of his life, he had to try to find out what is that. Right. In the midst of losing his father, in the midst of his parents divorcing, in the midst of his brothers and sisters being separated from him, in the midst of a lot of tragic things, right. he had to forge his way through That's right. with a force that had been put, put in him, right. but he didn't know what it was. Right. And then having to walk through it and go step and stage by stage to get to the point to where he's now completely dwelling and living on resurrection power. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. And what for me is I was what I the, the whole thing about me is is I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'm um I'm I have natural things that I have to battle just like everybody else. Right. Right. But when I see things in the spirit, yes. I'm not deterred. Right. And I know who I'm I am and I know who I'm called to be. Yeah. And a lot of people, the majority, about 99% of people don't know what that means. I live in a world where the meaning and term armor bearer doesn't mean anything anymore. But to me, it means everything. It means more than breathing. And serving the man of God and serving my dad is my, is my only job. But, you know, when you're talking to people that have natural jobs, family or friends or right. enemies, right. Um, when they have other engagements that are not kingdom first, we're automatically on two different pages. Right. So that causes a lot of disagreements. It causes a lot of friction. It causes a lot of misunderstandings. But as Christians and as believers, and what I was telling the men is, is you know, when I'm talking to the men, you know, I've been raised by a man's man, so my daddy's a general. So you know, I don't know how to how to tell you a cotton soft way. Especially when I'm just talking about when I'm dealing with the men. You know, as as soldiers, and this is what I was saying yesterday, as soldiers in the army of God. You know, and this is another thing my dad was saying when he was in the Marine Corps. Of all jobs that he had. It was, he was in administration, which he said that was the last place he wanted to be. But his job was to take the old orders out and, and discard them and put the new, and file the new orders. That's what he did every day. So, <laughs> nothing has changed. That's what he's doing now. But except the, the orders that come in are from the Spirit of God. So as new orders come in, see the difference is the old orders, they don't just dis dis discard it. They just get filed in, the, in line the way they're supposed to be. And as an apostle, that's what he does. Except those orders that are coming in are for each, pe each person's life. Do you understand that? God gives him orders for your life. So when you come to him and you want to listen, when you, there's safety. See, yeah, when we talk, 
people say, oh, Gabe, just submission, 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 like it's a dictatorship. No. Submission is for your protection. Right. Submission is for your advancement. Right. Submission brings blessings that you never knew existed into your life. Right. That's what it does. When you submit yourself to the man and woman of God, you see what happens is, is and I spoke on this too, is, is people want to separate God from the man. They want to say, oh, well, I heard from God or I asked God or I, I am submitted to God. No, no. You can't submit to God who you don't see right. if you don't submit to his man. Right. And last week, Archbishop said that there are certain people that God has different callings on. Right. There are people that he chooses. Right. 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 So when he makes a choice, regardless of what your opinion is or what you feel, your feelings, what I feel, what I feel, what I feel. So sick of hearing what I feel. Your feelings, your feelings, if your feelings don't line up with this, if your feelings, if you can't go look in the Bible and go, okay, that matches with my feelings. If you can't do that, they're demonic. It's plain and simple. Just because you feel something, that don't make it right. Archbishop Kirby came and said that your feelings can deceive you. Get that. Your feelings can deceive you. And somebody's words can change your feelings into deception. So if you listen to certain things, your feelings are going to change. Or if certain things have happened to you in the past and you haven't released them, that gives a tainted view of your feelings. That gives you a tainted feeling on the way you look at things. It's tainted. So what you have to do is you have to let God do surgery yes. and clear all that stuff out, but you can't do it without forgiveness. That was big yesterday, my dad spoke on that. It all begins with forgiveness. And then you have people that are deceived that think, I don't have any unforgiveness. You don't have any forgiveness, but you say, I don't trust anyone. Well, let me give you, let me give you just something. If you don't trust anyone, just know that includes God. Let me say that again. If you trust no one, that means you do not trust God. Because you cannot, how can you trust who you cannot see, but you don't trust who you do see? Everybody has issues. But listen, unforgiveness is the quickest way to get disease, to get cancer, to get arthritis, to get heart issues, to get strokes, all those things stem from unforgiveness because it poisons your insides. And listen, and God says, if you do not forgive, I will not forgive you. So when you have unforgiveness for whatever reason towards anybody, and you think that you're okay with God, you're deceived. Deception is hovering over you and holding you tight. You think that you're good, but you're deceived. And guess what? That deception can cost you your salvation. Unforgiveness can cause you to lose your salvation. Because guess what? You can't get into heaven if God hasn't forgiven you. Let me say that again. Don't expect to go to heaven if God has not forgiven you. So when you ask him for forgiveness, if you have any type of openness to the spirit, he's telling you, forgive this person, forgive that person. And listen, if you don't know, if you're not sure, just ask the Holy Spirit and he'll give you a list of people that you need to forgive. So listen. Back to the men's meeting because I had to get on that because my dad said repentance is the key. Yes. Then he read the scripture, was, was that Hebrews dad about the Pharisee and the tax collector? Luke 18. Luke 18, Luke 18 was the Pharisee yeah. that he goes into the middle of the church, the synagogue, and he, he, he's making it clear yeah. that he's in prayer. Then he said, and the Bible says, Luke 18, go look it up yourself. The Bible says that he prayed with himself. To himself. 
and trusted in himself. And, but listen what he says though, thank you Lord that I'm not like that man right there. Man standing in the church. Thank you Jesus. No, they didn't say Jesus, he didn't believe that. Thank you Lord that I'm not like him. I fast twice a week and I pay my tithes of everything I own. So if you look at that, he looks like he's doing good, right? He paid his time, he fasts and prays. The only thing is, is God can't hear him. God's not hearing one prayer from him. This is a supposable man that knows the Bible back and forth. This is a man of God at that time. God can't hear him. Then there's a tax collector that goes to the back of the church and he doesn't even look to heaven because he doesn't feel worthy. He looks down and he beats his chest and says, Lord, have mercy on me for I'm a sinner. Jesus told this story. Then he says, which one do you think that God paid attention to? Which one do you think God heard? So what does that tell us? That means you can come in here every Sunday. You can dress real nice. You can praise and worship. You can sing. You can drop your money in the bucket. You can, you can, uh, you can come stand in the prayer line. And guess what? God don't even recognize you. Do you, do you guys get that? Yes. So going through the motions means nothing. Right. It's about your heart. Yes. It's about your heart. Yes. It's not about what you wear. It's not about how much you show up. It's not about how much money you put in. It's about your heart. Is your heart submitted to the king? So listen, you can't submit to God if you can't submit to the apostle who's given his life. Because you're not going to see no other God. God, listen, we see, we supposed to see God in Jesus in one another. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But if your vision is clogged because of unforgiveness and your feelings have tainted the way you see, how can you recognize Jesus in the person next to you? Right. Or that person comes and repents to you and you don't forgive them. Now you've just added even more on yourself. How are we supposed to be brothers and sisters? We got people in here right now that won't talk to each other, won't look at each other, got an issue with each other, but you think that you think that that's okay in God's eyes? You think that, that you're, you're right standing with the Lord because you're in here today and you dress nice? Right. Right. <laughs> think about that. Right. That's exactly how God's looking at you. Right. He don't see you. If you don't follow his principles, listen, principles is not you fall in sin. Principles, Archbishop came last Sunday and he said, principles, five principles, I wonder if all you, who took notes, if you weren't here, go watch it on Ustream. I'm not going to go over all five of them. But there's five principles and the CD. See, Miss Marcia and my brother to get the CD. Principles that David never left from. Let's add to that. David done, he did some of the most worst things as a man that you can do. It's sin-wise. But there were godly principles that he never detoured from. And the Bible said that he had a heart after God. He was a man after God's own heart. How could that be if he'd done some of the most hideous sins known to man? You know why? God didn't see that. Now he did have the answer for that. But God never left him. And he always had favor with the Lord. Right. Right. Because his heart, his the principles were stained on his heart. Right. No matter what, he wanted to please God. Yeah. Right. He wanted to do the will of God. Yeah. Right. That was in his heart more than anything. Right. So the Archbishop gave us that example because we get stuck on your sin. Right. Right. Ex 
experts and detectives and researchers in sin. That's what we have in the church. No, not your sin. Your research is on other sin. But see, if you did that same research and detectiveness and background check in your own sin, you would just shut up. Because you would recognize, I can't judge anybody. I can't judge anyone. So when you recognize, I've been saved by grace. I need forgiveness. When you recognize that, then that automatically changes your view and your feelings towards your brother and your sister. Anyways, um, I didn't want to get off of what happened. All that goes into the men's meeting because all that has to also go into submission. And submission, see, when we talk about submission, it's not a one category thing. Submission covers every single category in your life. It covers, it covers your health. It covers your view of the man of God. It covers your place in the house of God. It covers your finances. It covers your children. It covers your parents. It covers your school. Every, every aspect of life. And I can give, I'm going to give one example of how it works. In protectiveness and covering from the apostle. So quickly. I got a call on Thursday. I actually had a few calls. It was an A66 number, so I assumed bill collector. Right. And it was two voicemails, and I listened, and I realized, okay, it was a call from the correctional facility. That's prison. So I'm wondering, I'm like, okay, this must be Christian. So they called back, I answered, and then the name says Brian. So I'm like, Brian. And I, the spirit shows me who it could be. So. The person comes on is hey hey gay is Christian, and Christian is 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 saying how you know ask me how I'm doing I'm you know ask him how no how are you doing, and uh, he says he said man uh, he said man he said it's 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 amazing he said you know there's this guy in here he's a big guy, and uh, he he just kind of reminded me of you, and he said that he was from Oceanside, and he and I asked him do you do you know big gay. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, I grew up with him. He said, um, wow. he said, do you have his number? He said, yeah. He said, okay, well, here goes some minutes. Go ahead and call him. Give him a call. Wow. Now, he's telling me this, and I'm telling him, I said, you see, even in there, you still being covered and you still being protected. Because in there, you know, if you're not of a certain, you know, type, uh, you can be taken advantage of or you can lose your life or many things can happen and a lot of bad bad things can happen so he has somebody that's much bigger than him covering him for the simple fact that he's connected to me which I'm connected to my father so that's a real life example of submission even because he didn't listen even though he didn't obey God is still protecting him and God is still covering him because of his connection to the apostle. So that lets you know this is bigger than you. This is bigger than us. This is a God thing. And the way that God has orchestrated his government is in this place. And if you, if you submit to that, then you just bring the blessings of God in all the aspects of your life. Just try it. If you think it's dope, if you don't believe or you think it's fake, just try it. If you try it, then you'll see the things change in your life. Alright, everybody welcome Lady Di. She's going to give us a I really love this. It's beautiful. I want to give a hand to my sister-in-law who decorated. It was like I saw a video and picture looking like a ballroom. Great right job, Chris. Well, good morning. good morning. Isn't it a beautiful day? Yes. It's a great day. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, yesterday we just had such a beautiful love feast. And yes. I'll just share with you what actually I started out with sharing. It actually even came out in the prayer. Is, um, you know, Crystal's heart. 
you know, yeah. there's not too many young women that I've touched a heart like hers. Right. And what she did yesterday actually was for her mother-in-law. Right. It was for right. Prophetess Cookie, right. Right. for her love for her. Right. But because she's a pastor and a prophetess and a mother and a grandmother, she included us. Isn't that nice? We all got included. <laughs> so, and what God really showed me with Crystal is in the book of Ruth, in the first chapter, I think it's, or the second, I don't know what chapter now. But anyways, in the book of Ruth, it talks about Naomi and Ruth. Naomi was Ruth's mother-in-law. And Naomi lost both her sons. She had two daughter-in-laws, and she lost both her sons. Her husband, wow. then both her sons. Wow. Now that's a woman that has got a heavy, grieving heart. Yeah. Okay, but she loved her daughter-in-laws. But after their husbands died, she told them to go back to their people. Wow. Go back to your home, go back to your mother, go back to your people. So the one sister-in-law, her daughter-in-law, she did. She left and she went home. But there was Ruth. Right. And when she told Ruth to go, she said, I'm not going. Right. And she told her again, you need to go. Right. You need to go and be with your family. And she said, I'm not going. And she said a powerful thing to Naomi. She said, where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. Wow. Wow. She said, your people will be my people. And she said, where you die and where you're buried, I will die and I will be buried. This is very powerful. But what, as I was sitting here this morning, God gave me more revelation of that. That has been those of us in this house that have said to our bishop and that have said to Prophetess Cookie, because God prophesied to me through the bishop when we were in the father's house years ago, he said, Diana, you are Ruth to, to uh, Pastor Cookie. Because I have said in my heart that where you go, I will go. And your God will be my God. That is very, very powerful. So those of you, when, when Gabriel talks about submission, that's it. You know, if God has called you, Ruth knew that she had to stay with Naomi. She knew that her very life depended on staying with Naomi, right. her mother-in-law. Right. But really, why should she? Right. Naomi told her, can I, have a, can I bear another child for you, another son? And even if I could, it wouldn't work because of your age. So that's the kind of heart that came out yesterday for me. And not only that, what God, you know, like with Prophetess Cookie, God took her back to her 20s when she looked up at our young women that were up on the stage worshiping and praising God, that God was showing her her life. Wow. Then God showed her her future wow. with Mama Frances, a great grandmother. Wow. So yesterday was very, very powerful. And God showed me in crystal the mother that I was to Justin and to Jeff. Amen. That my sons were raised in the church. My sons were taught the things of God. That's why my sons are now serving God. Yeah. Because of that. So it all is, it all comes down to you have to make a decision. Yeah. Mothers, we have all made mistakes. Grandmothers, we have all made mistakes. Great grandmothers, we have all made mistakes as mothers. But all we have to do is say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. And he wipes you clean. Then you get back up, 
get up right. and you do something. Right. And you love your children and you do the best that you can do. God bless you. Thank you. Welcome, Prophetess Cook, for the house. Stand up and welcome. Bonnie. Bonnie shared something with me that happened to her um, during the love feast yesterday. So I want her to come up and I want her to share because it's very important. Because everybody gets something different. You know, like yesterday in the men's meeting, some men spoke and they got something from that one man that right, said something. Right, right. So it's the same thing with the love feast. Several of us said things, but she was touched. So basically yesterday, um, I don't know Crystal very well, um, I'm getting to know her and I feel like um, yesterday I really got to dive into her and who she is from the inside out and um, Crystal. And uh, she is the most amazing person I've come across yet in this church, I will say. I want to be her best friend. No. <laughs> I want to follow her around. Um, so, so she opened up to us and um, basically explained all the things and, and um, insecurities that she's had her whole life. And she shared with us how her and Clifton um, met and courted. And um, what I got out of it was this, this, this woman. Has, has, has become through this church and through her church family and Cliff and all, she has become this beautiful, nurtured woman, so confident in herself. She's got two beautiful boys, very structured. And, you know, she's, she's a solid mother. She's yeah. solid. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not solid yet. So I just, uh, she's out there, Crystal. I just want to say, I love you. Like, yeah. I love you. Um, everything you shared with us, that took some guts, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, because I came in that love feast one way, and I left another. Welcome, Selena. One of our beautiful young women. Um, I definitely was not expecting to be called, but um, what I got from the love feast yesterday was um, knowing what it means to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Before I came here, I was, I had to put on a tough skin because of what I've been through throughout my life. <laughs> and, and when um, seeing all these women when I first came here always empowered me and I knew what it meant to be strong but strong in God Amen. learning how to be forgiving but also knowing how to be graceful and also um, I came in as I could say a girl and the more I, I, I spent time with all the women and everyone here I'm learning slowly and slowly how to become a young lady and in time looking at all these wonderful women of the church I'm I want to learn how to become a, a true woman of God yeah. and that's all I can say to all the young women that are here 
who are new, if you want to be a true woman of God, these are the women that you got to look up to, be around, and learn from. And soak every single thing in. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. She's nervous, but she's she got a good word. Just speak your heart. In yesterday's meeting, um, the love feast, yesterday's love feast, we I learned what it meant to be a Proverbs 31 woman. And I said it to Prophetess Cookie, which we learned is in the Bible, and Bishop didn't make it up, it's, it's in the Bible. <laughs> Prophetess, <laughs> Prophetess. Um, how to be a Proverbs 31 woman. <sighs> how we can be strong women. We, we could look rugged on the outside, like <laughs> Miss Crystal taught us could look rugged on the outside, but be caring and be strong and be successful and be courageous and go for what, what you want. You don't have to compare yourself to the people around you, the other women around you. As women, we're always comparing ourselves to each other and it's always a competition and we're always, oh, she has this or she looks like this or I wanna be like this. You, you gotta be the best of yourself. You got to be the best you. You got to be the most victorious you. That's what I learned yesterday. That we have so many women that we can look up to in the church. Miss Marcia, Prophetess Cookie, Miss Gloria, Miss Nash, Miss Glenna. There's so many women here that are Proverbs 31 women. That's a strong woman. I'm still scared. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. I can stand here and talk to you guys and not be nervous and not be scared. Um, but that's what I got from the meeting yesterday. And, oh, man, I was just, I felt so connected with Miss Crystal when she was talking. And she was talking about being the a rugged one and not being what a lot of people would look at her to be uh, a woman of God. You know, very strong for herself. Like, I... I grew up with a, a bunch of boys and a bunch of uncles who just rough. And you know, that I always, you know, did things by myself, you know, went in the backyard in the garden in the canyon and like pulled up trees and you know, <laughs> knocking down walls to help someone rebuild their house. That was that was me. But I don't have to be rough and I don't have to be mean and I don't have to have a hard heart because I, I used to be like that. So look at people and people would smile at me. What do you smile? Why are you that was me, but to <laughs> to look at someone and just it's different now that I've been here. I feel a lot of things that I I felt before, but now I understand what I'm feeling. I can feel people's heart. I can I can see your heart. I can and that's what I got from yesterday. I don't want to go too long. <laughs> Thank you. you bless and amen. Thank you. You did a great job. So, hallelujah. We just give you God, give God praise. And that was my heart, you know. Um, when Crystal decided to do the love feast uh, for Mother's Day, I was like, I was at work. So all day Friday, the ladies kept going, oh, so what are you going to do for Mother's Day? She, I go, I'm so excited. I'm, I, we have a ladies meeting. My husband is a minister. I just can't wait for tomorrow because I'm expecting great things. I said, not just for me. I know my, I've been watching my daughter-in-law prepare, and she was saying that she told my she go, I don't have no word. I have nothing to say. She go, I'm decorating everything. I'm making everything look nice and she's good at that she's really good god have given her a gift to decorate and create she has a very creative gift and i just watched her and the boys and her son 
So it wasn't, her whole family was involved in yesterday for you. The kids was really involved the whole week. Up to two, 10 o'clock one night, they cutting out and pacing and drawing and sticking things together. And I was like, oh my goodness. So it's just so beautiful to see how this came together. And she got up and she had so much to say because my heart was for the young ladies, the young women. And God, as we was worshiping, God took me back when I was in my 20s looking at them. And I just thank God that look at these young ladies, they have a chance in life. I know Clifton said it's time to go, but we're gonna close out, that's not it? But anyway, my prayer was all, the whole week my prayer was for the young ladies that they would be touched. So they listened to Crystal yesterday, she had so much to give because the panel, most of the ladies that was on the panel, we had a panel, They've been with us for 26, 27, 28, 20 years. I mean, I was like, what can we say to these young ladies? You know, I know they can look at us and go, oh, well, she's a mother, she's a grandmother. But what can we give them? And God truly, and we had a wonderful worship. I thank God for Christina. Christina, happy Mother's Day. So God has blessed me with a daughter and a granddaughter. So Mama Francis helped me to enjoy being a grandmother. And I thank her for that. She said, I have something to look forward. She showed me my future, my great grandkids. She said, Lois and Eunice, they train their kids. And so I'm excited about what, where God placed me to continue to give and that we all have something to give. Yes. You can start from 20, 16, 17. We talked about Esther. I didn't want to talk about Esther. I said, well, a lot of the young girls, they need to study, they don't understand Esther. Esther was a teenager, yeah. but she groomed herself for a king. Did you hear me? Yeah. And that's what I tell the young girls, you have to groom yourself and prepare yourself. Esther had competition, but she didn't look at her competition. Yeah. She couldn't be concerned about the other lady. She was preparing herself for the king. And so that's what really my heart was for you, young ladies, to prepare yourself for the king. And he will give you up to half of his kingdom. So I thank God for my husband that he has blessed me with wonderful kids. And my kids have blessed me with wonderful grandkids. So he was the first one said to me about a proper woman. I'm like, a proper woman? What is that? But I was then, I don't match her character. I'm not her. He said, well, you can become that. You can start today. And so we can always, there's a new beginning in our life. But we have to recognize, we have to cast all our weights and all the past. And we have to just press towards that gift and that prize where God has you. You are the daughter of God. You are a daughter fit for the king. Amen. So God bless you. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. We thank everyone for being here today. And we're celebrating a special occasion today. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. God bless you. You may stand. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We thank you for this wonderful gathering. We have heard from the men. And we thank you, Lord, that you are training up the Timothys. Because that's what God showed us yesterday. That we grandmothers and great-grandmothers, we are training up the Timothys for the kingdom of God. The Lord and the Eunice, we are training Timothy. Say, I'm training up Timothys. I'm training them up to be men and women of God. Hallelujah. And we just give God praise today. Amen. You are this man's love on someone. We'll meet you outside. Go outside, please. Everyone out of the sanctuary. Thank you.